now. Good morning, this is Rebecca Smith Aldridge. I'm the co-chair of the New York Library Association Sustainability Initiative, and I serve as the coordinator for library sustainability at the Mid-Hudson Library System. We want to thank you for joining us this morning. Uh, I'll be your moderator today, so you won't hear from me that much. Instead, we'll have our uh, experts be talking to you about a certification path for libraries to become uh, sustainable libraries and to make good choices on behalf of their organizations and their local and global communities. Uh, today we'll be hearing from Danny Glazer, the founder and CEO of Green Team Spirit and the program director of Westchester Green Business. And don't let the name Westchester fool you. Thanks to some quick thinking by Danny, she's been able to open up this program to all public libraries in New York State. So you don't need to be in Westchester County to benefit from this. And we'll also be joined by superstar Jill Davis, the director of the Hendrick Hudson Free Library, who you may have heard of last year because her library was named the Schuber Award winner in New York State, which is really the top library honor in New York State. Jill, we're so thrilled to have her here today because she's also a member of the Sustainability Initiative Committee and has really helped shape everyone's thinking about how libraries can move forward to be more sustainable in a very practical way. Uh, one of the big reasons we're here today is because the Council of the New York Library Association passed a resolution on the importance of sustainable libraries because they recognize the big role that libraries play in communities, campuses, and schools throughout New York State and the real role we need to step into to be leaders on the topic of sustainability. So they commissioned our committee, which has been working for the past 18 months, to figure out how we help libraries implement what we call sustainable thinking in a way that helps them own their role as leaders in their operations and outreach in their libraries. So the NILA Sustainability Initiative was born out of that desire for council to really want a group of library professionals working on helping explain what sustainability is, how to mobilize library leaders on this topic, and really to provide some very practical tools like benchmarks, which we're gonna talk about here today. So the Sustainability Initiative has been created to really create leadership and provide tools that mobilize library to think and act sustainably. We're working hard to build awareness and consensus while inspiring action by members of the library community to own their role as sustainability leaders in their communities. Our ultimate goal is to have communities that thrive. We're looking for communities to be able to bounce back from disruption and that they want them really to be infused uh, with new and better life for everyone. And we know libraries are doing that every day and we can really amplify the good work we do by taking on this strategic uh, idea of creating unique value through a sustainable commitment. You guys may have found your way here thanks to some of the efforts of this committee over the past year. Maybe you got one of the roadmaps to sustainability at the conference last year. You've been following our sustainability spotlights online. Or maybe you get our e-newsletter, which uh, comes out uh, monthly now. Um, however you found yourself here, it's really thanks to the hard work of close to 30 of your peers who serve on the sustainability initiative. Um, our teams, our committee is broken into teams, one of which is the benchmarking team. They're really looking to find ways to help you understand not just the theory of sustainability and sustainable thinking for the long haul, but what are those practical applications that you can be doing in your library outreach and operations that will make your library more sustainable and help you contribute to a more sustainable community. And this is a very big job. It's very unique work that they're doing. And they started by scanning other industries to see who else is thinking about this and discovered that libraries were a little bit behind uh, the thinking of other industries. and we happened upon other organizations that were doing good work in this area. And while not custom to libraries, they're doing good work that's applicable across organizational types. And that's what you're going to learn today from Danny and Jill. So just a reminder, we're talking about sustainable, we're looking to create libraries that are not just environmentally sound, but economically feasible and socially equitable. And libraries that operate using this triple bottom line definition are going to become leaders and exemplars in their communities for communities and community members to be making more sustainable choices themselves. So our opportunity is now to be, I think, catalysts and conveners uh, to help everyone understand what it looks like going forward in a, a wider and uncertain world. Um, so thank you for being here today. I think it's a gift to your library that you're investigating this, and we hope that it's uh, useful to you. I'll stop chattering now and hand things over to Danny Glazer. Again, Danny is from uh, Team 
green team spirit and the program director at Westchester Green Business and has been a, a really positive partner for us in the past year to understand the potential that libraries can uh, achieve through this program. So Danny, please take it away. Thanks, Rebecca, for that great introduction. Um, just so impressed with what you guys have been doing and I'm delighted to be a part of it. So you can go to the next slide. So this is really an incredible collaboration. Um, we've been talking, you know, we, I mean, Jill Davis and the Hendrick Hudson Free Library happens to be in the community where I live and just working with Jill and Hen Hud has been such a powerful experience and you know, Jill was the one who brought the program to NYLA and we're really very grateful for that. So Westchester Green Business is happy to provide the tools and expertise to NYLA to realize your sustainability goals, or at least some of them for certain. And we also think, like Rebecca was saying, that you know, the li if libraries really grab onto this, um, there is such an opportunity to scale this up. Um, originally, you'll see that one of our supporters is New York State, NYSERDA. And originally, um, a grant that we got from, from New York State, from NYSERDA, was focused on Westchester. And it was really the conversation with um, Nyla and Rebecca and Jill about, can we scale this beyond Westchester? And the second that we spoke about this to our um, program director at NYSERDA, we were like, absolutely, this is really the spirit of what we want to do. So I think that the opportunity here um, to drive sustainability and to do it through libraries that are pillars of community is just enormous. So again, I'm just very, very grateful to be able to do this with you guys. So I want to give you some background about oh, go back <laughs> about Westchester Green Business. Um, we started out in 2009. Um, this was really born out of a Westchester County very large climate action plan, and um, in 2009 it became a public-private partnership between the Business Council of Westchester, which is really Westchester County's like largest chamber and the county chamber, and then Westchester County government. And my company was contracted Green Team Spirit, and so to provide the tools, the um, all of my, you know, all and the expertise basically to support the program. And we are supported by sponsors. We have three platinum sponsors. Con Edison has been a sponsor since day one. Um, we're two years into a three-year NYSERDA, um sponsorship and, and grant, and the Westchester Community Foundation. So our gold sponsors, Agara and Regeneron, and our seven bronze sponsors are also members of the program, and all but one are certified members of the program. So we're really very proud of the fact that our sponsors appreciate what we're doing to the degree that they really want to be able to also support us financially. So these are the organizations of our 76 member organizations that have achieved certification. And you can see Hendrick Hudson Free Library up on the top left. And, um, and you will see as I go through the presentation what it means to become certified. And, uh, but we're very, very proud of this group. So this is the first of two slides that list the members of Westchester Green Business and if you look through it you can see that we service every and work with every single type of organization you know from one employee to thousands hospitals hotels yoga studios ice cream stores um, and you name it so we're we're really really enjoying working with this list and um, truly hope to grow it exponentially so that we can all make a difference. So what is Westchester Green Business? So it is it's the program that we have developed. Um, we have a customized toolkit for, as I mentioned, organizations of any size or type to become more sustainable. And there are four basic steps to certification, which I will certainly go through a lot more detail, but it includes surveying your staff, completing required actions, performing a greenhouse gas emissions inventory, and submitting a final presentation in order to achieve certification. 
So the first step is to join the program. Um, there is an application form and an annual membership fee. So we have decided to grandfather in, I wonder if there's another term for grandfathering in, um, Nyla Libraries at the 2016 rate for 2017. And we've also um, put the 10% nonprofit discount into the pricing for all Nyla Libraries. So what you're seeing now would be the cost to join the program for the first year. So once you join the program, you'll, I will send you a starter kit, and it has a whole bunch of things in it, but basically what this kit does is it allows you to, to go through the program, to set your policies, to take action, to measure performance. So you'll get these five items, a detailed new member overview, a green action checklist, um, the greenhouse gas emissions inventory tool for two years, an employee survey, so it's a survey monkey, it's all set to go, and we also provide you with a sample message to accompany the survey to encourage that it gets completed by staff. You also receive support, so we are available to our members, um, you know, on the phone, by email, in person if you're close enough, and if not, online meetings. We hold quarterly lunch and learns. We're doing one tomorrow, um, which is just a great way for our members to network and to um, sit and discuss the, any of the issues that are of concern to them or that they want to learn more about. Um, we also connect our fellow members all the time. So, I mean, Jill will be your favorite connector <laughs> in the beginning, and, um, but we also connect people to um, others that are not in their industry, that, but that can help on particular issues and topics. And, you know, I will certainly work with um, the NILA Sustainability Leadership Team to make special arrangements as far as support, um, so really depending upon how many sign up, we just want to make sure cause that we really are able to support you wherever you are, wherever you are in New York State, so, okay. So these are really the steps. I mentioned the employee survey, but I want to speak about that a little bit more. Um, this is a really important and effective tool. So it's really the first thing that we ask you to do is to distribute this survey to your staff. And you will learn about their thoughts and behaviors about um, performing sustainably at work and down to very detailed things like do you have recycling bins available to you? Um, are you receiving regular communications related to um, sustainability, et cetera? And it also invites your staff members to volunteer to be on the green team. And this is one of the most important points, and you'll see organizational commitment is the top of our list. And um, we don't expect anyone to do this work alone. In fact, we have one company where really one person in a large organization took it on, took on this role really entirely themselves, and then they left the organization, and sort of um, the others were really not involved. And um, so we want this to be a team approach. It's the way that it makes everybody feel great to be participating. So that's just a, a very, very important piece, and you will be able to um, discover who wants to volunteer and help through the survey. Uh, the Green Action Checklist I'm going to go through in a moment, and then it's completing the Greenhouse Gas Emissions Inventory, which I will also talk about. Then the, the final presentation is typically a PowerPoint, um, some have done videos, that we then post to our website. So it's really these now, I have you know 21 case studies, um, or these PowerPoints on the website right now, and um, it's just a great way for you to you know, put your best foot forward and market the great work that you had done. Um, we verify all of the information, so um, the, the checklist, the inventory, really, you know, come or deliver to us. We review them carefully. We get back to you with any omissions and any suggestions, and then um, and then you're certified. And what I really don't mention here is what we have been doing is holding certification celebrations. 
Um, so we make a very, very big deal about our companies once they get certified. So these are the seven areas that really cut through this entire program, from the checklist to the greenhouse gas to, um, to the employee survey. So, um, you know, and I don't, you can just take a look, I don't really, I'm going to go through them all one by one next. So organizational commitment is number one because without it, without um, your library director or the leader or your board or whoever your leaders are, if they're not on board with this, then it just really is not very effective. And, and you have such strong leadership with um, Rebecca and her team and the Nihilus Sustainability Initiative team, so you do not have a lack of leadership and you can see that it is just so critical to being able to do this work and to, to really to move it forward. And um, so these are just some of the specific actions that would be on the green action checklist that you would have to, um, to look into. And also, just so you know, that we provide resources for everything that you see here. There's a link where you can learn more. I mean, you can learn about landlord-tenant collaboration and stories about that. Um, we provide information here about incorporating your um, you know, sustainability into HR and job descriptions, a whole big primer on starting a green team. So these, these lists, as you see on these slides, have a whole lot of information behind them to make it very easy for you to learn about and to implement these actions. So energy, and just a quick word about policy. So we have provided you with an, an environmental policy. And some of our organizations just take that policy and they sign their name to it and they use it exactly as is and they send it off to staff. Um, others have, have customized it a bit for themselves. But the other piece is that we also suggest that you add certain policy actions. You can add it to, to a, one big environmental policy. So you can have some sub-statements. So for example, for energy, if it is a policy at your library that computers are shut off at night, then that, that can, if you want to, that can be written into the policy. And let's say you have a new hire at the library or you have your current staff and then they see that, oh, okay, this is part of the policy for this library and, you know, and for my responsibility as an employee. So that's just an example. And, th and that same exact um, policy approach can be taken across all of the different steps. So I'm not going to go through everything here, but you can just see um, that we, you know, we look at the, these various components as it relates to energy. And materials management, waste, and recycling. So Jill has a great waste audit story as, as how the way that they approach auditing their waste. Um, but it also there's information and resource links related to rece recycling electronics and paper and office supplies, kitchen supplies. Um, and to how you can handle meetings and small events. You know, maybe pitchers of water with a slice of lemon instead of water bottles is always a nice, nice touch. Um, for purchasing, this is really an area where many of our organizations have found that they've been able to consolidate and to save money and to purchase less and making decisions of, um, you know, for example, if you're using a lot less paper because you've switched to you know, more electronic documentation, then there can be money left over from what you've saved from buying less paper to possibly spending a little bit more money on an eco alternative. So, um, and this is also an area where we are happy to have our members collaborate with each other because if some have found um, some great eco-friendly alternatives um, that they are buying, they are really happy to share that information with one another. So transportation, we focus on three areas, employee commuting, business travel, and fleet. Can't imagine that too many of your libraries have fleets, but if, they, if you do, um, we do measure that information and, um, and then give you, you know, suggestions and ideas to you know, cut down on transportation and travel. 
So land use, if you are involved and if your um, library, if you have any ownership over the land, and even if you don't, um, there's a whole section on proper land management, um, environmentally conscious land management. So it's also a conversation that can be had with the building owner, the property manager, the landlord. Um, about sustainable land use. And I know, um, I believe at Hen Hud Library that there's a garden. So I mean, there's also some very visible things that can be done as a library to um, sort of showcase and some best practices when it comes to what can be done with land use. And water is the last of these sections. And um, again, water conservation. So whether it's installing water fixtures to, you know, to low flow um, from either the faucets or waterless urinals and all kinds of things that can be done mechanically, but it's also about just um, conserving water and using less water. So the greenhouse gas emissions, so what you've done right now is having gone through the green action checklist, there are now, there's now behavior change that has happened. There's awareness. Um, so people are, are doing things differently. Um, the tool actually is now the metric that measures um, what is being done. So the first year it would be a benchmark of, actually, so for example, if you did sign up, you would get two, two spreadsheets, one for 2015, one for 2016. And you would input the data, as, and by the way, the, the charts and the graphs automatically populate, so it's not a scary Excel spreadsheet. It's actually um, very user-friendly. And um, But you'll be able to see what's going on with you know, energy, whether it's electricity or natural gas um, and you know, all of these other areas. And then going forward, I know that Jill has like four years of data where she's already been able to see some trends from her greenhouse gas emission inventory tool and some notable trends of that there were reductions in energy that were really directly attributed to the changes in um, staff behaviors as well as the implementation of certain you know, energy related you know, lighting and, um, and other initiatives that, that were set forth by the library. So, What's really nice about this, this is the metric, um, and the other piece is that this really, this information can help you with grants. Um, so many of our nonprofit organizations are using their membership in the Westchester Green Business Program and um, just sort of the fact that they are measuring their emissions as a way to um, get grant money for, for those um, funders who really believe in this kind of work. So the final presentation, I think I, you know, basically it's just taking all of these areas that you have done the work on and creating a slide that really puts your best foot forward and some great pictures and um, with what you have done. And, um, you know, so our, many of our organizations have taken their final presentation and not only is it on our website, but it's on their own website and it really shows their commitment to um, sustainability. So going forward, industries, um, so really, seriously, Nyla was one of the catalysts for us to really move toward an industry focus because we truly believe that it is the way for this work to, to really become significant. So for example, we've been holding industry forums, we did one um, a year and a half ago, I believe, for healthcare, for local hospitals in Westchester at that time, and just convene a conversation with leaders of these hospitals as well as the sustainability directors, um, 30 or so leaders around the table, and having a conversation about how can they work together to really move the needle. Um, then we had one for libraries at Hendrick Hudson, and many of you were there. And, um, and that was a great, great event. And here we are today having this conversation. This is really a next step forward. 
Uh, we just did one for real estate professionals. We had architects and engineers and construction management firms, um, very, very brokers, a really interesting conversation. And higher education, we're doing one for colleges on April 27th. So um, again, we just think that this is just a fantastic way for you know to just colleagues and those in the same field to to come together and really push the envelope. The internship program is something we're very excited about. We it's a brand new initiative. It's being supported by the um, Westchester Community Foundation, and we have our company. We're matching very high level students, college students and graduate students with our companies who want help. So there's going to be um, availability for 15 spots of, of summer interns and then again in the fall. And um, so we feel that this is really a win-win situation because um, we are training. We actually have a two-day training in partnership with the Greenberg Nature Center, so it's two full days of training for the students, and they are being matched very closely with our companies. And this is also something that we would, you know, be able would like to be able to offer NILA member libraries. Um, we might have to get a little bit creative because if you are quite a distance away, um, we'll have to figure that out. But it's really a wonderful program. Um, as far as New York State expansion, NYSERDA, as I mentioned earlier, considers this program to be a replicable model. Um, web tool is in progress. This entire program is being put on the web, so you will hopefully no later than summer 2017 be able to go online and accomplish the entire program online. So if you sign up today, you're still going to get a spreadsheet. And, um, and it still works, but um, in, the, in the near future, this will be a web-based platform. And then finally, on the fee structure, as I said, you were grandfathered in for 2016, but we made a change in the way that we're structuring our fee in the, in the future because um, we're giving an incentive to organizations to become and achieve certification in the first year. So their, their initial fee would drop to 50% um, the following year once they achieve certification. So I hope you can all join us on June 6th. Um, we are having our seventh annual recognition event and awards ceremony. It's a fabulous event. Um, this is a cocktail reception at a beautiful venue in Westchester. And um, it just celebrates all of it, all the great work that is being done by members as well as um, any others that are interested in sustainability. So it's a lot of fun. Hope you can come. So that does it for me. Cool. That was great, Danny. Thanks for that overview. Um, I think it's great to kind of get a feel for the type of work that has to get done during the process so people understand it's it's no small thing. It's definitely a commitment. So we definitely wanted to make sure you had a chance to speak to one of your peers um, who's gone through this and really has real life experience with it. And as everyone in public libraries knows, things really go as planned. So she's got some uh, real life stories about how she made it happen. And again, we're going to be speaking with Jill Davis, who's the director of the Hendrick Hudson Free Library, and Jill's also a member of the NILA Sustainability Initiative Committee, one of the very first people to apply to be a member of that committee when we first got off the ground. And uh, I actually got to talk to Jill before this ever started because she wrote a great article for JLAMS, the uh, Journal of the Leadership and Management section of NILA. It's another place if you want to go and read about libraries doing sustainable work. Jill wrote a great article about the work she was doing at that time for that journal to, I think it was two or three years ago. Um, but I really want to point out that Jill's library is really, I think, a model at this point. It was recognized by the um, Regents Council uh, on Libraries last year through the Joseph Schubert Award, which is arguably the top award um, given to libraries in New York State. And it, the reason they got that award was because they were the first library to do this certification path and really break new ground for libraries to think differently about how to move forward and run their operations and connect with their communities. And I think there's that two sides to that story that Jill can really bring uh, to your understanding of why this might be a path for your library as well. So Jill, please uh, tell us your story. 
All right, thank you, Rebecca. Thanks, everybody, for um, joining us today. I really get the fun part of this because um, when we entered into this program in, um, I think it was probably 2014, maybe the end of 2013, um, Danny approached me, and she is one of my patrons, and said, hey, do you want to want to take a stab at this? And I said, sure, I'm usually open for just about anything. Um, so we began participation, I think it was the end of 2013, maybe the beginning of 2014, and we received our certification in January of 2015. This um, program, I can't tell you enough how awesome it is. Um, the benchmarking tool and the guides you through the entire process where you can examine your organization's current practices and it, and it helps you to move forward to the next next level of environmental sustainability. So I am so excited to tell you all the things that we've done here. And if you even think uh, with what Danny's gone through already, like this sounds impossible. It's not. It's not impossible at all. Everybody can reach certification. And um, the, the teams that Danny has put together and her organization really help you um, maneuver through it. So if there's something that's a challenge for you, they can help you find a way to um, still complete the tasks, but within your own organizational framework. So you go ahead to the next slide. All right. So um, before I tell you what we did here to complete the program, I think that it's important that you understand why um, this library and this board um, jumped on board. So we kind of looked at, there were five areas where we thought participating in this program would help us help our community to move to a more sustainable future. So the five areas that we discussed were education, engagement, economics, empowerment, and energizing. So it's our mission as libraries to educate. It's probably in all of our mission statements to educate the communities that we serve. This program encourages libraries to do that in ways they might not have envisioned. We're in a unique position to serve the very young, seniors, and everyone in between. So we have the opportunity to get everyone excited about learning ways that they can promote greener living through education, and really, most importantly, through example. Because um, you know we are part of the community that we serve. Um, the second thing we looked at was a community engagement at every single level not only with our patrons, but most definitely with businesses in the community and even beyond that. There are great partnerships to be made through the certification process, and through those partnerships um, come opportunity to promote what your library has done to make a difference. Through, the programs, uh, through this program, we made awesome connections with Con Edison and uh, the energy saving programs they offer and have had the opportunity to upgrade our entire building um, to LED lights. Through this partnership, the utility provided 70% of the cost of that, and we only had to pay 30%. So it was a huge cost savings initially, and then, um, as I'll tell you later on, uh, it's been a huge savings over um, the past three years that we've had a completely LED building. Um, let's see. We also are a, uh, we, we did a partnership with, um, which I'm really excited to see that Field Goods is now part of the Green Business um, Program because if you haven't heard of Field Goods, it's locally grown fruits and vegetables that are delivered to your library weekly for your patrons. It can be used as a fundraiser and it also um, was another partnership that we were able to tell our community about. Um, and, and well, pushing you know, the sustainability aspect of it. And for us, it gets new people in the doors who might not normally have come to the library. And we usually make about, about $1,000 a year on it. Um, we are part of the community task force in, in our town. We're part of our business association. We're part of our chamber of commerce. And all those areas give you the opportunity to engage. And when you have this program behind you, it really gives you talking points. Um, you know, this is what the library is doing. Hey, you can do it. And, and the more we get the word out there, um, the more participation there will be. And it will just make your community a better place. Um, the third was economics. So being a green building and promoting sustainable practices saves money. It opens up doors to be able to leverage new streams of funding sources and grant opportunities. 
as a direct result of our green initiative, we are partnering with our local develop. well, we actually have already completed it now, um, with our local development corporation, and we are putting on a 1,200 square foot addition to our building. With that addition, we will be um, constructing a water garden, which has opened up more partnerships for us. You know, I wasn't quite sure what that was going to look like for us, but it's going to be a water garden. It's going to take the runoff from our roof. to feed. It will feed into the water garden. And we've already been contacted by our town and by our school district to um, run some educational programs. So it's another great way to just really solidify your library as part of the community. Uh, which brings me to um, leadership or becoming empowered. So once you realize that libraries can make changes that make a difference, you want everybody to know it. So you want to use your place as a community leader to make your lar library part of the larger conversation. We took the, a lead role in, promote, in the promotion of um, a Solarize um, Croton Cortland event where we helped the community learn about opportunities for them to put solar panels on um, their homes. And, in, and then in turn, we decided with our new construction that we would um, include solar panels as part of that plan. So we will be putting 284 solar panels on the library. Um, what's really cool about that is we're going to put them there, and we're not going to let people forget about them, because we're going to have a kiosk inside where the kids can come and look and see exactly what, um, what they're producing, you know, which panels are working, let's hope they'll all be working, um, and just how much energy we are saving. And then finally, um, it's, for me, a lot of my job is about fun. I just, you know, I, want, I love coming to work every day. And this program allowed me to energize other people and continue to bring like fun into this library. We have a green team. Um, Danny spoke about the survey, excuse me, the employee survey. When we put that survey out and, and the staff answered it, and we decided to put a green team together, which you need to do. I was absolutely amazed at the staff members that wanted to be part of the team. They were not the people that I would have thought. So it was a great opportunity to kind of pull you know, other members of your staff into something to kind of make you all closer. So it was, it was really great, and it really has um, encouraged a lot of em employee involvement. Um, OK, next slide. So uh, what did it look like for us? Um, what it looked like for us was, um, we'll start with the organizational commitment. The very, very first step that you have to do is you have to get your governing body on board. And when we discussed you know, all of the benefits that this entering this program would have for this library, it was a no-brainer. They were like, absolutely. It's well worth it. It's, it puts us out there in the community. And it's, it's a really important um, that, uh, it's a really important aspect of what we do that we can now include the community in. We were, I think the only thing you guys haven't mentioned is uh, we did receive the Organizational Commitment Award from Westchester Green Business the first year um, that we were part of the program. So that's a really key part. Get your board, your board or your governing body on board. Get your policies in place. And like Danny was talking about, it doesn't have to be you know, 12 different policies. It can be one general policy that you can work into your daily activities. We found that it was very important to us that we um, include an environmental piece in our job descriptions, as well as our employee reviews. So that was a way that we were able to meet some of that criteria. Um, then energy. So energy was really, really fun for me. And I know that um, Danny had mentioned that we had seen some savings. And I just went yesterday and updated our, our form. So we, I now have updated information on what our actual savings are. So through the replacement, really it's through the replacement of all of our lights to LED lights. That's really the only thing that we've done um, specific to energy saving costs that cost us money. And when we started collecting our data, so like Danny said, we had from 2012 until 2016, we used to use yearly 182,000 kilowatt hours of power. In 2016, that number dropped to 128,240 kilowatt hours. So that's a decrease of just shy of 30%. Um, but we saved in that time period 
on electric use only about fourteen hundred dollars and if you include the delivery of that it's about an eight thousand dollar savings so all of that was done through the replacement of our LED lights um, which again I had said um, seventy percent of it was funded through our utility company so that has been the most monetary saving that we've seen but um, there are things other than monetary which are which are really important for you to think about when you're considering whether or not this program is something for you. Um, so then the next is the material management and waste. So of course, um, you know, I said we have a green team. We um, have recycling containers. We were, we were pretty impressed with ourselves, you know, when we first went through the checklist because, as you guys know, as, as libraries, we're very frugal with our money. We, we pay very close attention to where it's going and what we're spending it on. So we, we did pretty good here, but one of the challenges that we had, and this is my garbage story, um, was we needed to record the amount of waste that we were putting out, whether it was paper, whether it was your garbage, whether it was um, recyclables. And since we are, we're an association library, but our garbage is provided through our town at no charge to us, we had no way of determining how much garbage we were making. So what we do is we pick one week a month that we actually weigh our garbage with a luggage weigher, and then we use that as an average. So it's um you know it's oh it shows you that even if you think you can't accomplish it, there's a way you can. You can figure it out, um, and then you can share that with other people. So it won't be a challenge for them either. We've also um, started working with a company called Call to Recycle, who recycles all types of batteries, whether they're the one-use batteries or the rechargeable batteries. Um, there's a small cost to get the box, but the, you know, in the end, the box holds about 55 pounds. It takes us about two months to fill up with um, patrons' batteries, but it's a great way to get um, that waste out of the regular garbage and to where it needs to be. We also do it with... Um, uh, light bulbs. So we have a box that we actually keep behind the reference desk because um, it's breakable, where people can recycle their, I believe it's their CLF light bulbs. Um, materials management or purchasing. So um, you, you need to make a list, and, and I'm not going to, I'm not going to say this isn't time consuming. You do have to go through all the products that you buy. You need to get them into an Excel spreadsheet, and then you need to decide if there are more. Um, sustainable or friendly products that you can choose. But the good news is that many companies will help you with this. We're part of a Staples Advantage, and one of the first things we said to them was, look, we are a green certified building, and we want to use the greenest product, products we can, but we don't want to um, be paying a whole lot of money for them. So they work with us wherever possible to help us buy in bulk and to help us buy products that we feel are uh, better for the environment. Um, another thing that we did is um, we use real plates and bowls. I mean, it's not feasible for everybody and in every situation, but like if we we do a um, a cookbook book club, and um, the the librarian came to me and she said, I don't know what to do. I it, it I need like bowls for everybody, and I said, Well, we're just gonna go to the dollar store and we're gonna buy twelve bowls and we're gonna use the bowls. So. They use real bowls, they use real silverware, and yeah, we have to wash them, but you know what? It's okay. In, in the end, it's, um, it's something that we feel good about doing. Transportation was an area that was um, a little bit challenging for us because, you know, most everybody who works at this library probably lives within a five-mile radius, and the hours that many of the part-time staff work are not, it's not conducive to carpooling. But I can say that we do have um, one staff member who drives an electric car, and we have a couple that either walk or ride a bike. So um, we felt like we did what we could there. Uh, land use, again, I talked about the water garden. But there are other areas in land use that you can tackle with using um, organic fertilizers. We work with our um, landscaping and our pest control to make sure that what they're using, it's usually organic materials, and we have a listing of them so that when somebody comes in because you know they need to post their signs and then they're concerned that we're a green building but we're using you know 
pesticides, we can give them a list, list of the products that are being used so that they feel comfortable that we're doing the best we can to, um, to not be putting those um, toxic chemicals back into the water, uh, into the land. Um, and then water. So we were pretty good here. You know, we have low flow toilets. We have automatic shut off sinks. We put signs up to remind people to make sure that they, um, you know, turn the water off. Uh, we also have most all of our lights are on timers, so we don't have to worry about that too much. We measure our water, so we take a record weekly of our water usage uh, for multiple reasons. One is for the program, but another is also just to make sure we don't have any leaks around. So all of those things. Um, help helped to um, get us to our certification. We had a great certification celebration. Um, many of our county legislators came. Um, we the presentation was terrific. Um, I think everybody had a good time. I think probably what I'll say to end this portion of it is that you can't do it alone. I think that that that's very important. You have to have a team that supports you. Um, you have to have a board that supports you, and you have to kind of think outside the box when you're doing these things because there may not be an immediate benefit that you see, but it may be a year down the road or two years down the road that you say, wow, because we did that, you know, these people came to us and, and asked us, you know, would you like to have composting on, you know, at your library? Currently, we compost. We compost only our staff food, but you know what? It's not something that I wouldn't consider because I think every step that you make in this process helps you to think a little bit further down the road and it helps you to um, get your name and your library and what you can offer your community out there. And I think that that's probably for me one of the, the most important things. Um, all right, last slide. All right, so what do you do next? Um, I think you bring this information to your board. Maybe you ask them to take a look at this webinar. And you let them reach out to Danny, to me, to Rebecca, and ask some questions. Um, I think the best thing that they will find from that is that it has been successful, and it's been successful on many different levels, not just in library, not just in the library world, but in many other areas. And I think they'll see the importance of it, and um, they'll be on board. So thanks, guys. Jill, I want to thank you. You did a, a great job of telling a story of what your uh, experience was, and I think that's so important for libraries who already might feel like they've got a lot going on and they don't want to spread themselves too thin. But I think you really told the story that it's really about thinking uh, in a very long haul way, that it's not about the immediate. It's about building that reputation of the library and the community as a steward of the community's trust and of uh, the future, and also of being a community partner, that we're not just in a silo by ourselves over in the corner of the community, that we're truly a member of the community and we're your neighbor and we're a good neighbor. So thank you so much for telling that story. I think you did a great job this morning. We just wanted to make sure everyone has the URLs for the two spots that can help you uh, make sure you got all the information that you need. Um, if you're going to be talking to other members of your staff or your board about this, um, there's lots of information at uh, Danny's website on greenbusinesscertification.org uh, and also through the NILA Sustainability Initiative. Those of you who have been familiar with our work might already know about this, but if you don't, at nyla.org slash sustainability, you can read the archive of all the sustainability spotlights. You can uh, request a copy of the Roadmap to Sustainability to kind of educate yourself and your staff and board about what true sustainability actually is and what it looks like. There's little stories in there about libraries throughout New York that are doing good work on this topic as well as subscribing to the Sustainability Initiative e-newsletter, which can give you the leg up on news and education and things to see and do that can help you educate yourself about the topic and help your library move forward in a more sustainable way for the future, which we think uh, through the Sustainability Initiative is pretty key to the survival and success of libraries in New York in the coming years. So I see that we've got a few questions that have come in, um, so we want to make sure those get answered. And I think um, the first one I see here is related to data collection. 
So, Danny, I think this one might be for you. Um, this person asks, for collecting data, you showed the years 2015 and 2016, and this person is asking if they would start with the current year and go forward, or are they looking for the retrospective data collection? So the reason, um, so we weather normalize the greenhouse gas emissions inventory tool, so which is why um, 2016 is the most recent year that um, we can, that data should be input because we'll have to wait until um, pretty much, yeah, like January 15, 2018 to get the 2017 tool out. And um, so that's why we do that. And we also welcome welcome you to go back as far as you want, um, but we feel that two years is great, uh, you know, a, a really good place to start that's not overwhelming. The next two questions are about the fee. The first one I can answer, the second one I'm going to give to Danny. And just a reminder, everyone, I'm reading these questions from the question chat box in the menu on the right-hand side of your screen. Or if you need to re-expand your menu from earlier in the day, that's where you find the question box. The first question is whether or not this is only for NILO organizational members, or is it any public library in New York State? The answer to that is that currently it's for any library in New York State. Uh, NILO membership is not mandatory, but um, I'd be surprised at any library that wasn't a member of NILA. It's really uh, kind of, a, I would think, a default setting for libraries in New York since there are lead advocates and making good things like this happen, but to each their own. Uh, no judgment. Uh, a little bit, maybe. Um, but the second question is for Danny, and it's about the fee. The question is, is the fee an annual fee or for two years of participation? It is an annual fee. It's an annual fee, and you need to go to, and I just want to clarify the website, if you do go to greenbusinesscertified.org, it will give you the redirect to where the website is currently housed. So um, you'll get there, but it'll just be a little bit circuitous. Um, but it is an annual fee, and the new, um, so the, the fees that were listed on that, um, on the slide, are the ones for that we grandfathered in. And then um, I'm hoping that any library that joins will become certified in the first year with, with all of our help. And then when you do look at the fee schedule that's on the website, you would look at the nonprofit rate and you would look at the annual dues post-certification. So that would give you, and it's still by employee size, um, we've, we've cut that up a little bit, but that'll give you a good in indication of um, of what the cost would be. And we did have someone early on in our process, uh, maybe last fall, express surprise that there was a charge for a program like this. And we really had to educate ourselves about this type of certification and why that fee was there. And the committee really looked hard at that to make sure they were comfortable recommending this program. And the, the, the team that's working on this unanimously uh, reconfirmed this is the right path to be on. Because if you think of what you're paying for is access to this tool and the expertise and support you get through Danny's team. And that's something that, you know, you wouldn't get just by t picking up a book and trying to do this all on your own. So when Jill said, you know, it took them a year to get through that, you can only imagine how long it would take without that type of structure and support you receive through this program. All right. I'm not seeing any other questions come in, but um, I'll give everyone a few minutes if they want to send in another question. But I would like to ask uh, Danny and Jill, watching some of your uh, other participants in this program, what have been some of the best parts of this for them? Um, I mean, to me, it's just the variety. Um, you know, everybody's experience is so different, and everybody's approach is so different. And um, you know, and it's just um, I love just watching and sort of. I, I think that the program gives the companies the freedom to do it their own way, and um, so you know, like an organization like Regeneron, for example, this, you know, if you're in Westchester, you know Regeneron is a very um, large and fast-growing pharmaceutical company, and they really got their environmental legs from this program. Um, someone jokingly years ago called us the PSAT for <laughs> sustainability um, benchmarking, but, you know, now that Regeneron sort of jumped in years ago through us, they are now reporting through the Climate Disclosure Project, and um, I mean they have just taken their entire sustainability 
effort and, and, and enter the very, very big world of, of metrics and reporting. So that, that's a big example. But, um, you know, down to the ice cream store and, and just the way the impact that it's had on them and, you know, the, you know, what they purchase and what they serve and, you know, the fact that you go in there and now there's silverware hanging on, you know, to please, if you're going to stay here, just use, you know, one of these regular silver spoons rather than, you know, there's no plastic forks and I don't know, it's just, and, and just listening to Jill was so amazing because even the light bulbs that she has, you know, in the lobby and the collecting, I mean, that all of that is so visual. So even though it's okay, it might cost something and so many pounds get delivered, you know, just the, the impact of just sort of walking in and seeing, oh, field goods, I can get my fresh produce here. And, you know, the water runoff is, you know, coming from the roof out there. And it's just the whole thing. And I loved listening to, I could, you know, listen to it all day, you know, what Jill just had to say. So... I think the experience is really unique to every organization. I would I would agree with that, and I think um, what I find is that um, we we go. There are so many opportunities through this program. Now, granted, this is probably because um, it's based in Westchester, but it doesn't mean that it can't happen other places. The connections that I make. Um, are incredible to me. They may not be something that I need right right at this moment, but it's something that, that I can file in the back of my mind, or there have been people that have reached out to me and said, hey, you know, can we come to your library? Could we do a program there? You know, th those things are terrific, and, and it reaches me a little bit out of my community, which is really nice, um, because if they find me and they like it here, I don't know, maybe they'll go to their hometown um, library too and ask. So I think that um, a really, really big part for me is after the certification, just those relationships that I'm able to continue to utilize to benefit this library and this community. Well, Jill, I think that's a, a great spot to end our time here today. We're just about at our end time. Um, so I just wanted to end by saying I've been a library consultant for about 18 years. And as many of you know, a big part of my job is helping libraries win at the polls, to make sure their budget votes and building referendums pass. And, you know, you don't do that overnight. Those are the types of uh, big wins that we look for that you can't do just by throwing it out there and asking people. You've got to build relationships and trust over time. And I think that's exactly what Jill's describing her experience to be, that those partnerships formed the more uh, fulfilling ability to do their mission as a library and really be a member of that community is what it takes when you want your local to support their local library. So I think I'd like to end just by thanking Jill and Danny profusely for their time this morning, for telling the story and helping onboard other libraries to this experience that think, we think will pay off um, uh, for years to come um, for libraries that jump in and go through this process. So we want to thank everyone uh, in the audience today. Thanks for your attention and your questions. We look forward to seeing what you do next, and we uh, hope you take the opportunity that Jill and her library did as well. So thank you everyone and thank you Jeremy for hosting us this morning.